The easiest beer ever. We get asked all the time to make beer. Now, when I say all the time, once a week or twice a week, someone suggests that we make a beer. And it's usually, can you make a clone of this exact beer? And usually my answer is no. And here's why. We don't do beer that way. But can I teach you how to make a really easy beer? Yes, I can. And we've always done all grain beers. Okay, yeah. we've never really messed around with anything. But but I thought. But we were thinking about a concept that we have similar with wine making. If making wine from juice is completely viable because that's what you get when you juice the grapes or the fruit anyway, then couldn't there be a similarity with a different style of beer brewing? Enter liquid malt extract. Or, as they say it on this one, concentrated brewer's wort. Brees, what is your problem? It's liquid malt extract. <laughs> but anyway, that product. We will have links to all this stuff in the description of this video, so if you want to get some of that through Amazon, you can. We are affiliates, so we do get a couple of pennies if you buy it, but it doesn't cost you anything extra to do so. Um, that's where I got it from. So, um, Anyway, what is liquid malt extract? It's literally just if you took the grains and steeped them and did all the work and then drained it out and then concentrated that down to just the sugars you get that that's what it is it works out to one pound of this in a gallon is 0 0.046 gravity the same as sugar which makes this stuff stronger than honey for fermentation and one of our admins adam just always uses liquid malt extract to make his beers and he's like it's just like making meat i don't understand well the one he had even had hops in it. So for that one, it's super easier even than what we're doing. So that would be like the world's easiest beer ever. W-B-E, yeah, but anyway. So we are doing the next easiest thing and that is just to make a liquid malt extract beer. Now, the one that I chose is CBW Traditional Dark. Why did I choose that? Because I like that's dark the way he likes beers. It. <laughs> I don't go for this pale ale and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not real into hoppy beers. So I like stouts and things like that. Now, someone will argue and say that they all have lots of hops. Well, different styles have different things. What style of beer are we making today? Easy, that's the style of beer we're making. It's a dark beer. Let's just stop there. Um, I don't want to have a nuanced argument about what style of beer we're making. Instead, we're just making a simple dark beer, all right? So to get started, really, really easy. You do need a few things. You need a fairly large pot. You need some water. You need the hops, which I'll get to that in a little bit. These are just Cascade hop pellets, and you need some yeast. I'm actually going to be using Safe Bell SO4 today because it's an ale yeast, and it just seems to be on point for that. You also need your liquid malt extract. We were going to do a dry malt extract, but then I found out that dry malt extract doesn't make as nice of a beer as liquid malt extract, so we switched to liquid malt. You do not actually need a portable stovetop. You can use your stove if you want to. We are using the portable one because it's much easier to show you that. You probably need some sort of a scale, which I'll just get that going. And what I want to do is get a half gallon of water into this pot right now. And yes, we're making a one gallon batch but I'm starting with a half gallon of water. Just trust me on that. There's a reason. Doesn't even really need to be a half gallon. Just get a bunch of water in there. Okay, so I have my half gallon of water and I'm tearing out my scale and I took the lid off of the liquid malt extract so you guys can see what it looks like and it's super, super dark. I'm going to pour out one pound directly into the water and it's, whoa, thick. Oh my God. You can tell I work with this stuff all the time, right? That's why I'm so surprised by it. <laughs> it's messy. There's there's no two ways around it being messy. I almost think that whole grain is neater. <laughs> okay, now that I have the extract in here, I want to mix it up real good because it did kind of just go right to the bottom and obviously it's heavier and denser than the water. So you don't want it to burn when we put this on the burner. So I just want to mix it up real good. And at this point too, I'm gonna to start adding my hops. Now, I'm just using Cascade hops. Why? Because it's what we had. If you wanna use a different kind of hops, go for it. There's no specific style here, so it's all good. What I am afraid of though is over hopping, okay? Because I've done it in the past many, many times. It also bears mentioning that normally to get to this point, just to have the sugary wort is like an hour and a half to two hours of time. This took more time for me to talk about it than it did to do it. It's just, I, I can see the appeal to the extract style brewing. It's a little sticky. 
I'll give you that. Derica had to clean up the sides of the like jar. kind of like molasses. Oh, I, yeah. I, I cleaned the side of the jar. Oh, it's yeah. still very sticky, and I'm going to have to work on that some more. We're going to have a bug issue. Now, the interesting thing is that's 3.3 pounds in there, so that can, in theory, make over three gallons of beer just from that little container. It's actually pretty economical, too. It's not quite as cheap as doing all grain, but it's actually not bad. Um, but anyway, back to the hops. Like I said, I'm using Cascade. I'm going to be doing two additions. Now, what that means is you put one in at a certain time and another one in at another time during the boiling process. Now, the boil isn't technically necessary, okay? Because the boil comes from a long time ago when people thought a lot of weird things, like one of them that the bubbles in beer came from boiling it because it <laughs> bubbles up. And they also had an idea that boiling it made it safer to drink, which they weren't wrong, um, depending on where they got their water from, depending on how good their grains were. There's a lot of reasons to boil. Today, we're using all good ingredients, so I don't really have to worry about boiling as much. So I'm going to do a 20-minute boil. Yes, I know. I can hear some people screaming at me already, but it's not necessary. In the past, I've done what's called raw ales with whole grain, where we didn't boil at all. So the only real reason I need to boil today at all is to get the hops going and to melt all this stuff into the brew. That's it. But anyway, I have two 0.2 ounce, which is like 5.5 gram additions of hops pellets. And I'm just gonna put one of them in right now. That is our first edition. And it's okay if it doesn't break up, it's just gonna sit in there. What I'm still doing is getting this all mixed together. I think I'm pretty good. Yep, it's good. And I'm gonna put this on the burner and crank up the heat to high. And you want to continue stirring that a little bit. So I'll have my lovely assistant take care of the stirring part. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't put all the water in, it's because A, it'll take a lot more energy and time to heat up a gallon of water than it would to heat up a half gallon or a little bit less of a half gallon. And at the end, we need to cool this back down to under 120 degrees to be able to add yeast. So using that water over there to cool it down at the end should bring it right back down to a nice even temperature relatively quickly because one thing about beer is infections can be a problem so everything we used is sanitized everything's been clean and we want to minimize the amount of time that this spends open before we get it into a fermenter so we're just going to bring this up to a boil and we'll see you in a couple minutes While this is coming up to the boil, I am giving this pretty much constant stirring. I don't want to let this settle at all and burn. It's a very sugary liquid, and once it starts to boil, do not walk away from it because it can overflow. That's another reason for not putting so much water into this pot, because most of this pot is empty, so this way it won't overflow quite so easily. So we talked in depth about what our process was going to be from here on out, and originally we were going to use a funnel with a strainer and some cheesecloth and put that into our fermentation vessel. But then we opted to just use a larger strainer and put that with the cheesecloth to ply into our pitcher, giving us an easier, larger area to pour. Right. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to end up diluting this with more water, making a full gallon, right? But I want to get those hop pellets out because you don't want them to stay. They'll just keep extracting and they get really, really bitter. So the cheesecloth and strainer is there to hold those back, but let the wort go into this water, which is cooler. And that way it should drop us down to pretty much close to fermentation temperature. We're doing this in a large part because enough people have said that they're afraid of making beer because it's too complicated. Now I'll give it this. It is more complicated than making say mead or like a juice wine. However, using extracts, it's really not complicated. There's a couple extra things. It takes a little bit longer, but like I said, normally to get to this exact position, I'd be at two and a half hours easily in the brew process. I'm into this at 20 minutes, so no big deal. Obviously, if you make a larger batch, it will take longer because you have to heat it up. But I still like the heat up a small amount, like even a third of your water with the LME in there and your hops. Make that your boil and then strain that out and add it to the rest of your water. That'll help cool it quickly so that you don't need to buy a wort chiller, which I don't use anyway. I put it in my bathtub and put like five inches of water in there. Cools it down instantly. Well, not instantly, like 15 minutes. It's starting to get hot. I can, you can see the steam. Brian's getting a facial. 
Yeah. So is our microphone. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how good that is for the microphone. Probably not. I'm going to move the microphone. All right. So getting out my handy dandy probe thermometer, I'm just going to check the temperature here. 203. We're pretty much at a boil right now. Yeah, I can hear that boiling sound. So I'm going to start my timer. So 20 minutes on the timer. Most boils are about an hour. And there's a reason for that in that it's mostly about the hops. All right. You can boil your hops separately, which I was going to do that. But because I know LME is so thick and needs to dissolve, I decided a little bit of a boil with the hops in there isn't going to be a problem. So we're doing two hops additions. Many beers call for three and they're done at different times. Like one is done right at the start of the boil. Another one's done halfway through and another one's done like five minutes towards the end. The first one is usually just for bittering. Okay, and then the middle one adds a little bit of body and flavor of the hops. And then the last one is really just for aroma. So we're basically doing a bittering, which will only go for about 20 minutes. And then we're doing a, an aroma just five minutes before the end. So when there's five minutes left on my timer, I'm going to add our second hops addition. Uh, a lot of recipes will, like I say, call for three different additions or even four I've seen in a couple of recipes. And they just do different, slightly different things. If you watched our, I think it was the Braggot, which was, which was the one that we didn't do hops, we did herbal... Oh, that's the Groot. The Groot. Yeah, there we go, the Groot. <laughs> if you watched that video, we actually used those hop edition ideology of, of the bittering, the mm -hmm. uh, flavor, and the aroma by what herbs we selected to place in at those times. Right, and a Groot is basically just a non-hopped beer. So I could have used the LME that we have and just used herbs and spices instead of hops and could have made a Groot using that. And you know what? I'm starting to think maybe that sounds like a really good idea. We might actually be making another Groot video. Why not? Um, no, that was not planned. <laughs> just sounds like a good idea. Because this would make it super easy. It's oh, yeah. really, really simple. I actually really like this now. So you might see more beer videos. Who knows? It's getting really hot. I know. I could just grab my gloves. But I figure, you know, the entertainment value of me screaming and complaining about it is probably <laughs> better. Hey, the pay. Yeah. So I just want to keep stirring this. And like I say, in 15 minutes, we will show you adding the next hops edition. The hops completely fall apart, though. Like, it's, it's powder in here, basically. That's why I cheesecloth to strain it out. Okay, so our 15 minutes has passed. Now I want to add my second hops edition. Now again, these are just 0.2 ounces or about five to five and a half grams each. Very, very small amount. And I'm just going to put them in and immediately start stirring because if they sink to the bottom, they'll stick and burn and that's bad and we don't want that. And then five minutes left. All right, our five minutes are up. So I'm going to kill the heat, remove the spoon, don protective gear. <laughs> Because it's hot. It's burn my hand just stirring it. I can't imagine what's going to happen when I try pouring it. And I literally just want to pour this into there as carefully as possible. Pardon, but I'm going to lose my head. And now that you have it all in there, I just want to jiggle it around a little bit to let it all get through because, you know, it gets clogged up and... Yeah, the hops make a big giant mess, so they've clogged up the cheesecloth pretty well. So. Yeah, I'm liking Adam's idea of using the pre-hopped stuff. I, I like that concept. <laughs> can imagine it would make things... It makes it so much easier. I mean, you don't even need to boil at that point. You just need to get it heated up and melted and mixed, and then it's done. But we did hops. This way you get to have a little bit of customizability though. You can change the amount of hops, you can change the types of hops, that kind of thing. So pluses and minuses to everything. And beer making is just like any other aspect of home brewing. You can make it as complex or as simple as you want to. I'm liking the simple on this. One major advantage to a liquid extract versus doing it yourself is you don't have to worry about efficiency. Efficiency means the amount of sugars that you actually extract from those grains. And that has everything to do with how well you can maintain temperatures, what temperature you get to, and things like that. When you use an LME, somebody else did all that for you. It's constant from batch to batch, so you don't really have to worry about any of that. That's one huge advantage. For me, it takes a little of the mad scientist effect away, but uh, some days I can see it. Because instead of spending an entire day making a batch of beer, I can spend like an hour and a half and be done. 
because I can tell you exactly how long we've been going at this right now. We are at 47 minutes. That's how long it's been recording. 47 minutes, and I'm just about ready to put this into a fermenter, which is amazing for making beer. It's a little bit slower than making meat or wine, but it's not that bad. All right, so now that we have all that together, I'm going to take a quick temperature reading on this, and hopefully it's under 120 Fahrenheit, that is. And it's going up 114.8 looks like 114.8 so that's about perfect 110 would be slightly marginally better but by the time we get it into the fermenter and everything it really doesn't matter basically yeast dies at 140 it starts dying at 120 so as long as you're below 120 you're pretty safe what I want to do though is get a gravity reading on this I'm expecting somewhere between a 1.040 and a 1.050 just because I know what the must does and that'll give me something in the six-ish percent range, maybe slightly more, slightly less. And, you know, I'm just going to spill it everywhere, as I always do. You guys are used to that by now. I don't know how I even managed it that time. That was, that was pretty impressive. See? This is why we put fabric down on the table. Okay, now this is really interesting to me. It's only coming out 1.030. I was told that one pound of LME equals 1.046 in a gallon. 1.030. Well, let me just do some quick math on that because that's not really such a problem for me. Um, one sec. If it was to go down to what most beers go to, which is like 0 0.005, it would be 1.030 minus 0 0.005 times, that'd be 0 0.025 times 135 so that gives me like a 3.3 to 3.4 percent beer by the time i carbonate it it'll be around four percent a little on the light side for a beer but that's actually okay if i did want this to be a little bit more i could just add more liquid malt extract at this point but you'd have to make sure you mixed it really really good because this is not boiling anymore so it might be a little bit more difficult to mix but um that's interesting i've never used that product before so I'm not saying that they did anything wrong or I did anything wrong, just the numbers don't actually coincide with what I had been told. So, something to keep in mind. All right, now comes more pouring, which is, you know, always Derek's favorite part because I usually get it on her. And I just want to get it from this pitcher into the one gallon container. Now, because we're using our handy dandy pitcher with the raised lettering on the side, um, I know we have almost exactly a gallon here and I can actually just add two more ounces of water if I really wanted to to have a full gallon but that would actually dilute it further further dropping my gravity so I don't really want to do that instead I'm just going to pour this right in now I do not mind that it is dropping like that from the funnel because you need some oxygenation at this stage in the game however one thing I am going to do is I'm thinking ahead I have my yeast I have a wet funnel I don't think I can pour straight into the neck of that bottle very, very well. So I'm going to put my yeast direct in here. I'm halfway through with the wart going in. Keep that in mind. And then use the wart to rinse off the rest of it so that it all gets in there. All right, so it's time to put the airlock on before we get too farther in the process. But I wanted to mention something. And this is something that we've been critiqued about or have been commented on on the channel and that's when we change from the pre-hydrating our yeast to the simple pour it in the pitcher Ooh, and i know this one going to read something for you it actually says on the back of the package of safe ale so4 pitching sprinkle into wort that's it it doesn't say hydrate some do okay some yeast actually do this one does not say to do that and um that's the story we're going to and that's what we're going to stick with and that's how we're doing it <laughs> but basically as i've said before if you are questioning the viability of your yeast then it's probably a good idea to prehydrate because that will give you an idea not necessarily not necessarily a yes or no answer but it may give you an idea if your yeast is still viable yeah if they bubble up they're living yeah. if they don't it doesn't mean they're dead that's but correct. it could mean they're dead right but if you have a brand new batch, we just got these yesterday. Yeah. Just toss it in there. It's okay. <laughs> now, the next thing that you want to do when you're making a brew like this is you want to write down what you did. I'm going to do it off camera because it's not so exciting to watch me sit here and go like this. <laughs> you know, I just don't see that as good entertainment. So I'm going to do that off camera. But we are going to let this 
start up on its own and we will show you in a, in just a few seconds what it's doing but we will let you know at that point how long it took before it actually kicked up fermentation okay so we noticed something right away with this and we were both like is that working is it no it can't be with it it's gotta be heat no i hello it started bubbling <laughs> literally within a minute of shutting off the recording and i was looking at the inside and i'm like well maybe it is maybe it's not at this point let me just show you what this is doing it's amazing First, there's the obvious airlock explosion activity happening. I mean, obviously, it's working. There's, you know, it's already up in the airlock. You can see it bubbling like crazy. And then when we get down here, let me see if I can get this to focus. It's this part here where you see yeah. that mass of bubbles just rising up the edge and creating that foam layer at the top. It's almost as if we had an aeration stone in the beverage creating those oxygen bubbles, but that's not the case at all. That's actual fermentation. So that it isn't oxygen. What is it, Brian? That is carbon dioxide and several other gases, thousands of them actually. But because it's doing this, I don't like this because this is bad. It can overflow. It can get actually clog this up and shoot it up and have all kinds of issues. So we're going to remove the airlock and stopper. Well, not really the stopper, but the airlock and that gets cleaned out, okay? New star sand put in later on, everything like that. And we have here a mason jar filled with sanitizer liquid. Now, I don't always use sanitizer liquid for a, this is what's called a blow off too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's coming out. We don't always use star sand for this. Sometimes I'll just use water, but I'm just gonna jam the tubing. Oh, I don't wanna do that. Do not force your stopper all the way into your brew. Instead, I'm just gonna do that. And then I'll push the stopper in and put the other end into the sanitizer fluid. Now, it might take a couple seconds, but you're gonna see it's bubbling already. <laughs> it's just crazy. Now, every once in a while, you may have to clean this out. We're gonna put this on like a baking tray or something that has a lip so that in case it goes over or anything like that, we don't have to worry about it. Well, also probably masking tape the tube to the side yeah. so it doesn't get pushed out because I'm not gonna sit here and hold this all day. You're not? No. Why not? I'm just not. <laughs> but anyway this is working we're really happy with the way this is going right now this is probably going to take a little quicker to ferment than most maybe seven to ten days or so and uh, we'll be back with an update in the next video in the series but if you like this video look up there's another video up there you might like that one too